Welcome to Link Paris 2023. I'm Rodrigo Rivera, the Link Online Editor. And today we have a special guest. It's Dr. Jean-Marc Olivo. He works as stroke neurologist from Toulouse, France. Good morning. Good morning. Today you have a great presentation about large stroke uh, infarcts and treatment. So what about the, the advanced imaging tool? So I think if you want to consider treating a large stroke patient, you have to know that the patient is having a large stroke. That's the first question. So you, in fact, I would say in my practice and many of my colleagues, we like to know who we are treating. So you, when you look at the randomized controlled trial, they both, they, most of those, they use advanced imaging as a selection criteria, even if then they apply non-con CT as a common denominator. Advanced imaging has demonstrated its ability to help the physician, uh, stroke neurologist, as me. I'm working in a busy uh, stroke center and clearly it helps us to right away know if the patient is having a stroke or not, if the patient is having a LVO. And it has been demonstrated by our colleague from the south, from Barcelona, that uh, in fact advanced imaging like CTP, in addition to Doncon CT and CTA, can help to detect patient eligible for mechanical thrombectomy better with a 30% increased rate of detection uh, when you add CTP to non-con CT and CTA. To my standpoint, I don't trust uh, aspects. I'm poor. I'm, I think the, uh, the inter-rater and the intra-rater agreement is poor. It's not very reliable and it takes time. While advanced imaging can tell you right away the patient is having a stroke or not. This is me, I'm a stroke neurologist, and uh, we are treating a lot of patients every day. But imagine an emergency physician in a remote area who is having a patient and he, don't know if this patient, he doesn't know if this patient is eligible for a thrombectomy and if the patient will miss the chance of being reperfused because the diagnosis will not be made based on the non-con CT or uh, on a CTA that is always difficult to interpret. The major information from uh, those randomized controlled trials was that there is no selection restriction for now uh, based on the output of advanced imaging, which there were some of the results were a bit puzzling. Uh, the absence of penumbra did not seem to matter in this group of patients. This is completely at the opposite of uh, decades of research on the field, so I think it remained to be confirmed by in other trials. But at least I think that advanced imaging will give us some more insight of the characteristic of the stroke and we might be able to extract some information that are available but we are not using now, maybe to consider the drug environment of this patient. Because we do know that for now we are recanalizing, you interventionists are recanalizing 90% uh, of the case but only 50% of the patients are doing great. So we are thinking about adding some more treatment, it could be IA thrombolysis, it could be antithrombotic, to improve uh, microvascular reperfusion. We had the experience recently that this could be dangerous. Uh, the use of heparin in Mr. Clean Med was associated with an increased rate of hemorrhagic transformation. And maybe we're starting to have some clue from clinically acquired advanced imaging that we might be able to visualize the blood-brain barrier damage and other biomarkers that might help us to foresee and forecast this kind of hemorrhagic transformation. I think that hemorrhagic transformation and the so-called no reflow or the poor reperfusion, microvascular reperfusion are the next frontier. And I do think that advanced imaging, clinically acquired, not delaying the management of the patient, uh, might help using some specific post-treatment as we did for the penumbra to better manage or at least test some new treatment. One example is the result of the APRIL trial, which was positive, presented at the ISC. The selection criteria was using, uh, image, uh, included uh, advanced imaging selection. They wanted to be sure that the patient they will be giving the treatment uh, will uh, have first a stroke. They will have a substantial stroke, so they have to get a reliable assessment of the volume of the stroke. and that they will be able to assess different outputs, just as the hemorrhagic transformation and the infarct growth. In the result of the study is very promising, and uh, we do hope that it might uh, be a new therapeutic solution. 
We are using advanced imaging to propose new antiplatelets uh, for, for in addition to medical to mechanical thrombectomy. We are using it when we are proposing cangrelor. We are using it when we are proposing uh, glenzocizumab. We'll see. When you're using MRI, what is your actual workflow? Is there any problem for using uh, MRI in, in, in your daily practice? Is there only in your hospital in Toulouse or is it expandable to other parts of France? Or you think it could be possible in other parts of the world? I think um, there are two points. First, uh, we should not put anything in a human bo body that is not MR compatible. Uh, most of the heart valves now are uh, MR compatible. The, um, I think some of the pacemakers are getting more and more uh, compatible or you need to have a cardiologist nearby to stop it. So I think the limitation due to MR, it's checklist, I don't think it's something limitative. Um, in France, it's a very MR-based country for some reason. They are less reluctant to consider perfusion imaging. That's, this is what it is. But clearly, um, in Toulouse, we are working with uh, 10 primary stroke unit or even ER department who are referring us stroke patient, alpha for activity or drip and chips. Uh, in many of those hospitals, there is not even a neurologist. We are doing teletrombolysis. Frankly, I think that it's very informative to get the information with the MRI or possibly with a CTP to be sure that the patient we are dealing with is having a stroke. The patient is having an LVO and make the patient come over to our hospital because we have limited bed capacity and really we want to be sure that the patient is eligible uh, for a revascularization treatment. We are not cherry picking uh, patients, we are treating most of the patients possible. Um, but clearly, uh, if I decide to give, uh, for example, a TPA remotely, I want to be sure the patient is having a stroke. So, more and more, we are treating more patients. So we are treating, we are going down up to three, uh, aspect three. Yeah. You think we, we, that variant is going to be passed? We, we think that going to be treated almost any patient with a, with a stroke? No, I don't think so, because we have some patients when they arrive, the question is more to propose them an hemicraniectomy rather than reopening the vessel. I think uh, then maybe the tipping point will be aspect uh, zero to two, and the question will be uh, how we consider um, what will be the limit, because comparing a non con CT aspect in three hours with uh, DWI aspects, it's absolutely completely different. This is where I guess advanced imaging might play a role also for decision because we are getting a, somehow a more accurate estimation of a coalition volume that can help us to titrate the indication. I think, in my opinion, uh, if the patient is already handicapped, uh, I'm not sure that I'm pro do, proposing any improvement if somebody is already having difficulties, is demented, uh, is having a pre-stroke MRS of three, four, I don't think I'm really be helping uh, the patient. Those trials are great because as a researcher, they open a way to investigate uh, who do benefit and who did not benefit. This is a, a little bit like what has been done in the six hours when we look at the outcome of the patient being treated within the six hours. All the trials were positive, but when you look at the, the, the rate of uh, functional recovery, they were highly different, where they were put under the same umbrella saying, okay, those patients are having an aspect five to 10, but they are different. So I think in our clinical practice, we will think about age, we will think about previous handicap, we will think about critical volume, and we will think about delay. And we will get some uh, meaningful information from individual data meta-analysis, because we will have uh, 1,000, 2,000 patients who are enrolled in those randomized control trial. So despite the discrepancies between the different trials, we might be able to pick up some limitation. And that's already what the SELECT2 uh, investigator, uh, investigator presented. They say, if you're very old, if you're treated late and you're having a very large stroke, there is not clear-cut benefit. Very clear. Thank you very much, Dr. Oliver. Thank you.